I don't know what's going on in 2024, but I'm loving that the fact that these historians are over here correcting incorrect history. It seems like I have something new to share with y'all almost every day. Now, in a few days, there's going to be a book released talking in depth about the fact that Sir Isaac Newton's wealth was connected to the transatlantic slave trade intimately. Now, of course, it was the 1700s, so this is not really that surprising, but the way that it was connected is what's surprising. Now, he lost a lot of money in a stock market crash, but by the time he died, he was worth 11 dollars five million dollars because of the transatlantic slave trade let's get started and learn something new first a couple of weeks ago i did a video on this math genius francis williams please go back and watch that video if you haven't i promise you'll learn something new but he was a math scholar he was a poet he was a polymath he was an astronomer and he calculated the projection of Cayley's comet in 1759 now he was invited to be on a special committee with science geniuses math geniuses that included sir isaac newton but he was rejected because of the color of his skin so keep this in mind when we're talking about this whole Sir Isaac Newton stuff because maybe he was part of the crew that said he could be a part of the science committee. Now let's get into it. We all know Sir Isaac Newton as a scientist who created the theory of gravity and he revolutionized science. But what did he do after that? This book re-examines Newton's time as the master of the mint at the Bank of England for 30 years, where the scientists wielded political influence and amassed vast personal wealth after leaving his academic position at Cambridge. As I said, he worked 30 years at that bank and he oversaw an influx of gold mine primarily by enslaved Africans in Brazil. Now he was the master of the mint. So of course people are like, okay, well, yeah, they were working with the slave trade. They were working, they know where they're, no, he was the master of the mint. That means he knew exactly where this gold, he had to know where it was coming from, where it was produced, how it was produced, how it got to the bank. He was control of all of that. And as the master of the mint, he took a small fee for every coin that was minted. The gold made its way to the bank largely through trade with Portugal. And I just did a video on Portugal. If you want to go back and watch that, I promise you'll learn something new. They controlled a rapidly expanding gold mining enterprise in Brazil. Typically, British cloth merchants trading in Lisbon were paid in gold, much of which was turned into currency at the Bank of England. Now listen to this when they talk about they don't want to give no reparations. The book cites evidence that during Newton's three decades at the Mint, England minted about 14 million in gold coin, roughly the amount minted in the 136 years before this period, the transatlantic slave trade. The author provides more evidence that Newton knew exactly where this gold was coming from. He was at the center of the gold rush. The more gold that came into Britain, the richer he got. Newton's own correspondence confirms the origin of the gold, including a note from 1701 saying, we can have no bullion but from the West Indies, South and Central America, belonging to Spain and Portugal. Another letter in 1717, where he wrote to the treasury, describes the West of England as full of gold from Portugal, bringing into the mint great quantities of gold. I don't know how I feel about this next sentence, but one of the historian said, I don't think this should radically change every aspect of what we think of Newton. He's an epoch defining thinker, but even the greatest scientists are part of their time. Now, I don't know, like, because wrong is wrong in the 1600s or in the 2000s. Like, I feel like people know wrong is wrong. When you are enslaving people, you know that it's wrong. So I don't know this part where it says, you know, they're a part of their time. That excuse always sounded a little weird to me. I don't know about y'all. Another one the historian said, and I'll end it with this. Again, I don't necessarily agree. We can't apply our own moral criteria to people who lived three or 400 years ago. Newton was more culpable than some and far less culpable than others. But it's important to recognize that people who are up on a pedestal in Westminster Abbey were involved in slavery. I hope you learned something new.